We're back for part two of GMOS Algebra 1 Desmos Calculator Training. And so today we're back at this site. The link is in the show notes to the page that you see here. Click on Online Tools Training and click on EOC Test Practice, Standard Online Tools, and then Algebra Concepts and Connections. When your test is loaded, click on continue, click on the name of the test, Algebra Concepts and Connections, and then you will click through this tutorial and begin the test. Now the last time we did work through five of the items, so we're gonna skip over to question 10 to get there quickly. Go up here where it says question one and click the drop down and choose 10. All right, so here we have three functions, strawberry, grape, and raspberry jam. Uh, but you'll notice the question here does not mention the others. It's really just talking about strawberry jam. So we're going to focus on that one. It says, which statement is true about the cost to make a container of strawberry jam? All right, well, let's see. First of all, I'm going to open the graphing calculator, which is this tool. And I'm going to input the equation for strawberry jam and basically type it just like it's uh, just like it's typed on the test. I'm just going to input that. Uh, and then I'm asked to describe what this is doing. So one way to determine what's going on with the function is to use a table. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to click on table and on the left side I always start at zero because we want to know what the starting amounts are and then I usually count by ones and I highly recommend it in this case. So let's go up to maybe five um, and you could go further or you could put less but I'd say at least five points is probably a good idea. Where it says y1 we're going to take this out and we're going to replace it with s open parentheses x1. And when you type the one, it will subscript the one for you and it will output the numbers, uh, which are like your Y coordinates of your points. What it's doing is it's taking the numbers in the X1 column and it's plugging those numbers into the function for X and it's giving you the output and putting it in this table. So it's pretty quick. Now here at the bottom left, it says zoom fit. So if you'll press that, it'll spread your graph out a little bit and you can see better what's happening. So one thing you should notice is the value is increasing. So let's see which of these answer choices makes sense. I'm gonna pull this over and let's see which one works. It says the cost to make a container of strawberry was $3.10 in the first, or in the year the company opened. I think that sounds right because it says X is the number of years since the company opened. Okay, that works. This one does have 0 and 3.1, which is the same as $3.10. The cost to make a container, oh, wait a minute. The company opened and the cost increased 5 cents per year. Well, let's see. I think it might have. It went from 310 to 315 to 320 to 325 so I'm thinking this one's right I'm going to go ahead and check it but let's look at the others to make sure I didn't miss anything it says the cost to make a container was five cents in the first year well that's not true it was 310 C says the cost to make a container was 310 the first year that's true and it increased five percent each year uh, no five percent means it would change uh, the amount would change each year. It would go up more and more each time, and it's not doing that. Uh, the last one says the cost to make a container was five cents in the year the company opened, and it increased three dollars and ten cents a year. Oh no, it didn't increase, but five cents a year. So the correct answer was answer choice A. The next question is question 11. We're on the same scenario with the same three functions, but this time we're asked to look at G. So if you'll notice the name G is for grape jam. Um, I don't think we're even gonna need this tool, but I'm gonna use it anyway to show you what you might do. So for grape jam, we're gonna type in the function G of X.
Uh, I did type shift six and put that exponent. So if you're not sure how to do that, uh, shift six gives you an exponent, then you'll type the two in front. So this is g of x, and we're asked to explain what g of four represents. All right, and you'll see g of 4 is 3.04 in the calculator as well. So they're right about that. So it says, what does this mean? Well, in the year 3, well, it says x in this case is the number of years. So g of x means we're putting in 4 years for sure. So only two of the answers have 4 years in them. So I'm going to x out answer choice A because it has three years, and answer choice C, because it has three years. So we're down to the last two answer choices. B says $3.04. Well, that is what it says, $3.04. And then D says $4. Well, there's no $4 here. There is no $4 in this answer. So the correct answer was B. The next question is 12, still the same scenario, but this time we're looking at raspberry jam and we're asked to find the function that matches this graph down here. So to do that, we're going to recreate this graph. Uh, I'm going to start by setting the window to mimic this window as best I can. And it is a problem because I don't have a lot of space here. So let me just do this. I'm going to move this all the way up so that I can see the X's really well. Click on this wrench. And for your X values, you want to go from 0 to 5. So put 0 and 5. And you want to count by 1's. So where it says step, put 1. And for the X, I want you to put X, but also put a comma and then type those words down there where it says years, since company opened. It seems like this is taking a lot of time, but it's okay because you have plenty of time uh, to do these problems. The way they've designed your test, uh, some of these are going to take you a 30 seconds. This one's maybe going to take you a little longer, but overall you've got plenty of time to adjust this window because you're not having to do a lot of problems that require this type of work. Now your Y's, I'm going to have to move this way over here so I can see what I'm doing for my Y's. But my Y's go from 0 to 5 also. So I'm going to put 0 and I'm going to put 5. And then for the step I'm going to put 1. That's what I'm counting by. And I will go ahead and put the Y. But I want to put the comma. And then I want to put cost per container. And if you want you can put a dollar sign in there as well. So I think I'll do that. And so now I have all the information on here. Uh, now you'll notice here where it says minor grid lines. I'm going to click that to get rid of those. And the zoom square is a good idea, but I wouldn't use it. Let me show you why. If you'll just close this, you could actually see it pretty well. Uh, I don't think we're going to need to to use that. So I wish we could resize this. It sure would make it prettier. But it's okay. All right, now we're asked to see which of these functions match. So to do that... I'm going to type those in here on the left side. So the first one is R of X is equal to 2.0 times 0 0.87 and raised to the X power. So right away, I'm looking at this graph and I'm looking at the one on the test and no way. This one is decreasing. It starts at the 2, which is good because it does say 0, 2. Let me move this over right here zero two but it, it, nothing else is right so that one's not going to work so let's get rid of that one i think i'll do the answer eliminator for that one all right the next one is r of x is equal to 1.2 so let's change this to 1.2 and the the base is not 0 0.87 it's 2.0 2.0 all right, this one is increasing, but it's not looking to me like this one's working. Let me show you why. I do have, I don't have zero two, so that's right off the bat wrong. And then you can uh, actually press and hold to see these numbers, and these aren't working either. At one, it's supposed to be at 2.4. That's true, 
but at zero, it's not at the right number. It's supposed to be at zero too. So that one's wrong as well. So I'll use the answer eliminator, cross that one out. All right, let's see. The next one is 2.0, let's see, 2.0 and 1.2. All right, that one looks really good. It looks almost exactly the same. Let's confirm it. If you click on this point right here, you'll see the zero two. If you press and hold, you can go over here. It's kind of hard to hit it right on, but there it is, one, 2.4. That one's right too. This one is the correct answer. So we're gonna choose answer choice C. And don't do what I just did. Turn off your answer eliminator and then choose C. The next item we're working is question number 13. Here we have Kendra and Theo. Kendra has a data set that we cannot see, but we do know the range of her set is six, the median is seven, and the mean is seven or the range is six, the median is seven, and the mean is seven. All right, Theo collected data has, has the same range and the same median, but it the mean is 7.5, and it shows six of his points. So um, we're supposed to plot two remaining data points. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this graph, graphing tool, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data set for Theo. Let's call it T. I think I'll do capital T equals. So any letter you want is fine, but I'm going to use T for Theo. And then put an, an equal sign and then a square bracket. And then you're going to type in the numbers that we already have for Theo. Now Theo has five, five, because he has two fives. He has a six and a six. He doesn't have a seven, but he has an eight and he has a 10. And he has six elements in his list. We don't know how many elements he's supposed to have. Now let's see what his, we know he has the same median as Kendra. So what I want you to do is type median and put parentheses and put a capital T inside. This will tell you his median and right now, his median is not right. We need it to be a seven, just like Kendra's. And it's supposed to have the same range and the same median. All right, but we need his mean, M-E-A-N. So go ahead and put mean, and let's put T. We need his mean to be 7.5. So we're gonna have to add two more points to this set and make both of these numbers work. We need the median to be seven, and we need the mean to be 7.5. Here's the problem. Her range is six, and right now, our range is only five. If you go from five to 10, and I don't know if range is an option in here. Let's see if it is, no. Range is not one of the tools that they're gonna give you in the calculator, because they, I guess they figure you can do that in your head. The smallest number to the largest number is your range, and right now this range is not enough, so we need to add an 11 to this list to make it a range of um, six. So from five to 11, that's six. This still isn't working though. The median got a little closer. It's now at six and the mean got a little closer. It's almost 7.5, but it's a 7.3 about. So we need to add another number. Well, if you add another 11, that's too much. That makes your mean too high. So let's back up and let's add a 10. That's still too high. The median works but the mean's a little high. So if you make this a nine, that's gonna work. Notice the mean is now 7.5 and the median is a seven and it's just like Kendra's. So let's check it again. We got a range that is six. Okay, from five to 11 is six, that'll work. The median of Kendra's is seven. Well, the median of Theo's is seven. The mean of Kendra's is seven. 
the median and the mean are seven, and these are both. Uh, but the Theo's mean is 7.5 because that's what it tells us it wants right here. So the next trick, and this is fun, we got to click on this graph and add these points. Well, we added an 11, so click down here on the 11. It'll add the point. And we added a 9, so click right here and add a 9. And that's all there is to it. Let's go on to the last question. Question. 14. We have the graph of a linear function shown. What is the value that represents the y-intercept? I bet most of y'all don't need any calculator trick for this, but I'm going to go ahead and show you that there are some things you can do if you need them. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a table. And in this table, I'm going to plot two points. The first point I want to plot is the one on the x-axis, which is negative 2 and zero and you'll see where it is and notice it's in the same spot here that this one is so that's good and the other one i want to plot is this one which is zero four now if you happen to be one of those kids and i know i was when i was a student that sometimes gets those backward and you type zero negative two you're going to see right away zero negative two is not on this line so Hopefully that alone will help you a little bit. Now I want to show you something else. When you press and hold this little circle here, it'll give you the option to turn on a line. So I'm going to click on this lines and notice how it connected those. And I can zoom in and I can really see the X and the Y intercept. So the question is, what is the Y intercept? Well, the Y intercept is on the Y axis and you'll see the letter Y right up here on your test. So this is the number they want. They actually want the 4, not the 0, not the zero four. 4. It says the value, meaning one number. So if you can only put one number, the number 4 is the number you want. So click right here and just type A, 4. And that's all you had to do on that problem. This concludes this section of GMOS training. If you have not watched the first video, I encourage you to go back and get that one. I'm going to try to create at least one more of these for you. I'm having to look for some additional questions, but I do have some things I can show you that I have not shown you yet in that Desmos graphing calculator. Y'all have a great day.